amazed with the beaches when I first came to Australia. Nepal is a landlocked country. There are no oceans. That was my first experience of seeing beaches and just going and touching the water. Everyone swims here. And then the first time I visited Bondi, I saw a little baby literally in water and I was freaking out. The second life of the people is said to be water. But back home, some of uh, our parents, like uh, they don't allow us to swim until we are adult or something. As soon as you see the beach, you just kind of want to touch the water, at least go in, you think it's safe. I think it is important for international students to adapt to the uh, water culture in Australia because it is very different from where we are from. And this means that there are also different dangers and different uh, type, types of risks. These international students might come out to Australia, they're really excited to get involved in our culture, which is very much around water, but they don't necessarily know their abilities and the dangers that are around our waterways. So we do have a lot of amazing aquatic environments in Australia, whether it's pools or beaches or ocean pools. But it is really important to exercise caution in those areas, even if you're on holiday and you're having fun and you think it's pretty safe, to make sure that you stay within your ability so they can become quite dangerous quite quickly. Swimming capabilities differ from a country to another. So the countries who, are, who lay on the ocean they would be more able to swim in compared to those who are in, for example, in locked land countries where there are no oceans, no rivers. Although I can swim, I'm only confident to swim in the swimming pool, but I'm afraid to swim in the ocean because I'm afraid of the ferocious waves. In Nepalese community, the, when they come to Australia, most of the, I, I would say the boys, they get so excited and they would probably just jump to the water. They are overconfident that they will think that they are more stronger than the water. If you have swum before in river, it's not like that. It is an ocean. You have never swim here before. In Brazil, there are a lot of bars uh, directly at the beach on the sand and while in Australia this is not happening, um, people go there to have fun, drink with some friends. Consuming alcohol at the beach is like one of the main dangers that people can take. Back here, it's like really free and people don't really care about what you wear, but it doesn't really fit in with my culture. If you're not very comfortable wearing like swimwear, but you still want to give swimming a go, you are very much likely to find a secluded place, but then that is dangerous. If you are drowning or if you need help, other people won't be able to see you and they might not be able to reach you. During 2019, five or six Nepalese people drowned, which is a very sad news. People come all the way from um, their home country here to get education, um, and then they lose their life just because they went to the beach. It's uh, very heartbreaking for their parents. They're waiting for them back home. Being able to navigate the surf is a, is a pretty difficult thing that takes a, a while to learn. Through Surf Life Saving, we start teaching kids from the age of six in nippers. So it takes a long time to, to gather the skills that to really keep your strength and keep your positioning. Um, so some of the main risks involving international students and the Australian beaches is probably the lack of knowledge. Um, international students probably do not have a, a strong concept of how dangerous the Australian beaches can be. And have a look along the beach and see if there's any signs or flags that indicate that there's actually an area safe to swim. Unfortunately, a lot of the coastal areas are unpatrolled quite a lot of times of the year and this is where people can get in quite a lot of trouble. I have had some comments mentioning that the red and yellow flags are for some people or for some cultures considered to be a danger zone because it has the red color in it. We want to tell the international student that red and yellow flags is not considered to be a dangerous zone. It actually has been designated for you to come and um, enjoy a, a safe experience at the beach. So always look for them. So you'll either have someone wearing a blue shirt like this or a similar kind of blue shirt. That's one of the professional lifeguards. Or the volunteers wear a very obvious looking red and yellow shirt and often have a red and yellow little hat on their head. They're going to be watching the whole time. If you do get into trouble, the easiest thing to do is just to raise your hand like that and then shout for help. The difference between surfing Brazil and surfing Australia is that in Australia uh, the, the waters are much stronger and so I thought it was much more dangerous uh, to go swimming in Australia than in Brazil. I think the main risk that 
people who have never been to the beach before need to be aware of is particularly rips. They can be really fast, really strong. They're typically the deepest part in the break zone as well. White water, running waves, that would often indicate that it's a shallow area, a sandbank, and more often than not, that's quite a safe place to go. It's also something to do about the clothing that you wear during swimming. A swimmer is very popular here. You literally see people walking in swimmer around the beaches. And you won't get to see that in Nepal. It's actually a bit of a taboo topic. I came to the Manly Beach with my mom the other day and she was so excited as well. That was the first time visiting beach like with people around. And um, I just asked my mom, Mom, I need to go to swim. I will just change. She was just saying, why don't you wear the same clothes and just go to water? And I don't see like that is my mom's mistake. That is because lack of education. A lot of us need to know that there are a difference between wearing a swimwear and wearing a normal clothes where we wear in everyday life. Definitely your privacy matters. And then you sort of want to be respectful towards your culture, but you also have to think about your life. Particularly swimming fully clothed is one that we see a lot on patrolled beaches. It's definitely a danger. It makes swimming really hard because it gets really heavy. So uh, for people who come from cultures where swimwear is not as common and they might be tempted to swim in a secluded area or swim fully clothed, there's a lot of dangers that that can pose. There's different types of swimwear available, particularly in Australia, that are designed for all different cultures, particularly the burkini, which was invented in Bankstown in Sydney. There's definitely a lot of options for people for those who are thinking about going to a rock pool, there's many things that they should be taking in consideration. The swell does play a huge role um, in the rock pools and the ocean pools. Um, sometimes the waves that might not look overly large can really crash against the side of the rock pool that can flood the main walkway. When people go swimming in an ocean pool, it is important, I think, to think about uh, the depth of the swimming pool because it is it, sometimes you cannot really have the, the right perception. And also uh, the waves because they can affect, of course, the, the, the water inside the pool. waterways are actually the leading location for drownings in Australia. So when anyone's going to the water, they need to make sure that they're entering very slowly. We suggest that people wade in. So that means walking in really slowly and checking the depth. If you're going boating, you must wear a life jacket. This will keep you safe. Our research in inland waterways has found that 44% of drownings um, involve alcohol. So this highlights that it's a huge risk and we recommend that people do not drink and swim. So first of all, know your capacity. If you are uh, around the rivers or dam, like something uh, to think of is uh, the depth of the water. Uh, like you don't know how, how depth is the water. So it's uh, always uh, things to consider. And then uh, there could be some uh, rocks. Uh, so you could hit on the rocks and get injured. It's always a good idea to enter the uh, dam and river from the bank uh, rather than jumping uh, around. Uh, and then uh, moving slowly uh, at your comfortable pace. And always go with your friend uh, to swim so they can watch out for you and you can watch out for them. We also recommend that everyone learns CPR in case there is an emergency. You can visit royallifesaving.com.au for resources and to enrol in courses where you can learn CPR. Whenever you're at the waterways, also make sure you check the danger signs. It's also very important that we come to the river prepared to swim. We're wearing swimming attire, swimming costumes, not long clothes. So I recommend that people, before venturing out into rivers, that we maybe enrol in swimming lessons, become familiar with the water in a safe environment where it's lifeguarded before we venture out and try other waterways. I definitely recommend anyone that's wanting to learn to swim or start to feel comfortable in a water environment to start in a pool. 
I would definitely recommend coming to a lesson, one of our lessons, or anywhere that has a lesson near where they are. Um, that will just help them kind of have an introduction to water and get over some of those fears. Although I can swim, I'm only confident to swim in the swimming pool, but I'm afraid to swim in the ocean. I feel, you know, the waves can be very, very huge. And once the waves come, it can be really dangerous. But the swimming pool is all right. It's very smooth. I feel much safer to swim in the swimming pool. But I feel safer if I'm in a condition where I can touch the ground. If it is too deep, I need to swim on, on the side so where I can touch the, uh, the handles. In a swimming pool, there will always be um, the information that you need about being safe. There will normally be stairs or a ramp or a ladder access. And if you're unsure, I would recommend asking a lifeguard or someone when you enter the pool, where's the shallow end or where's the safest area for me to swim if I'm a non-swimmer. If we don't understand the risks about being around our Australian waterways, um, it can get quite dangerous and we have had fatal incidents occur, unfortunately. So when serious incidents do happen in the water, whether it's a drowning or missing persons, the police marine rescue do have to get involved. The, one of the bad parts of our work is uh, body recoveries and a large percentage of those uh, body recoveries are of international students and international visitors to Australia. If someone does go missing in the water, the financial costs are astronomical. As you can imagine, there's aircraft involved, multiple rescue organisations being Marine Rescue, New South Wales Police, um, Surf Life Saving, Fire and Rescue. That's a large financial cost, as you can imagine, but there's obviously an emotional cost on those officers and that victim's family and their friends. I had this personal experience of me um, a year ago in Ben Basin that um, my boyfriend passed away because of um, he not knowing how to actually swim as well. And then he was just trying to save his friends. Um, he didn't have any idea about um, safety procedures and safety uh, measures. With so many people's help, they, they couldn't save him. So it's such a loss for the whole um, family and the friends. It is still like, it gives me um, a different idea of the importance in educating ourselves on um, water safety. Small mistake that we don't acknowledge and educate ourselves um, and then we just have to lose lives. With the peer um, sort of pressure as well sometimes with friends and stuff and then like just jump into the water not understanding the um, importance of educating themselves. My advice to uh, other international students is if you haven't got any uh, swimming skills, uh, you can try to um, take a swimming class. So, you know, we have University Sports and Aquatic Center. They offer uh, different sorts of classes. First, to swim in the swimming pool, and when they feel confident, they can go to the beach and swim in the ocean. For international students visiting Australia, we're not, by no means are we saying don't enjoy our waterways, don't enjoy our um, great lifestyle here. By all means, enjoy what we have here. However, you need to educate yourself and tell someone where you are. If you're going for a swim somewhere, make sure you have friends that know exactly where you are, what time you're due back. You can swim in a pool, it doesn't mean you can swim in the ocean. They're two totally different places. Just because you're 20 and you're strong and fit doesn't mean you'll be able to stay afloat. Remember that the weather conditions, the wave conditions, the, the, the current conditions in Australia can differ from overseas. People are not expecting the currents to be so strong and they might not think about it, but it, it is uh, really dangerous. I think if people do not check that first, they are not, they are not good swimmers, uh, that might be a problem. Uh, I've realized coming to Australia that have, you can have fun at the beach uh, without uh, putting yourself in danger. I know it's very tempting to go straight to the beach. A lot of incidents do happen. And if you want to prevent those incidents, if you don't want to be the next victim, just look out for yourself, look out for your friends, and then don't overestimate your capacity to swim.